Y'all can do better than that. Forward together. Forward together. Peace and blessings to you. My name is Brother Kojo. I'm uh, from Charlotte, North Carolina. And I work with the clergy and the faith community. One of the most important things about the movement, as has been uh, reiterated over and over again, is that this movement is forged in and cemented in spiritual morality. It's not just a word. We're not just using it as a catchword because of not only Dr. Barber's background, but because of the fact that even Dr. Martin Luther King was trying to lead a moral movement. And in emulating him, we have to make sure that our faith-based community is deeply involved in what we're doing. Unfortunately, after Dr. King died, the churches moved to the periphery of the struggle and not from the heart of the struggle to the periphery. And somehow they got in Bob and all of this eloquent, fabulous preaching about prosperity and getting a breakthrough while we was getting our neck broke. You know what I'm saying? And they had people trying to talk about how they was going to get their own breakthrough and help themselves without helping other people. Uh, one of the things we do in the Moral uh, Forward Together movement is we have components and we have a faith-based component. And the most important thing is that you don't know is that a preacher has more access to people in the community than you do. That's right. That's right. And so the more, we need to have the church involved. But one of the biggest problems with church members and church people is the pastor sometimes convince the people that being involved in the community and in politics has nothing to do with the church. Right. Unfortunately, preacher, that's the biggest lie that they've ever been told. Right. Because if it were not for church being in politics, we would not be out of slavery. If the preacher was not in politics, we wouldn't have left Egypt. Because God got involved in the politics of Egypt to release the people of Israel. If the people had not been, in, if the church had not been in the civil rights movement, you wouldn't have had Dr. King, Y.T. Walker, Shuttlesworth, C.T. Vivian. You wouldn't have had all of those people. And that gave direction and, and the moral engine that we have comes from the church. And what I try to do, one of my responsibilities is to try to bring coalition and organization to all of our faith-based faith organizations in the state. So we go around and we try to get involved in every association, every convention, every session, every alliance, and this is what you're gonna have to do. We even go as far as to, in every church, we try to get the pastor to assign someone to do community organizing in every church. So they can stay in touch with what's going on in the community politically, so they can bring it back to the congregation and then get the pastor to act on it. Because if he doesn't act on it, you know most of us ain't gonna do anything. And we're trying to dispel a lot of myths and distortions about what we should be involved in and what we shouldn't be involved in, and we should be thoroughly ensconced in the civil rights movement. Because I look at hungry children just like we looked at the Samaritan. I looked at, uh, we looked at people who lost their job just like we looked at the Samaritan. He was beat up and left on the side of the road. Well, we are being beaten down economically. We are being beaten down by bad health. We're being beaten down educationally. So we try to get our ministers together. As a matter of fact, on our 10th, which is the number of divinity, on our 10th Moral Monday, we had the ministers, we had clergy day, and we had over 400 clergy to take the lead in the services that day. So it's very important that the churches get involved, it's very important that the churches coordinate and coalesce with whatever other base organization. It does help give that moral uh, high ground to the, to, the, to the movement, and it also helps develop the type of language and the perspective of the language that you use, because it's biblical. And as you know, Dr. Barber has been using a lot of language, talking about um, Isaiah 10th chapter, and talking about Jeremiah the 22nd, and all of those things. And those things are very important. And one thing that I want to leave with you in terms of uh, what we must do and how important the church is, we talk about this is a war. This is a war. It's a war against evil. It's a war against discrimination. It's a war against injustice. And when we say we go out to fight, a lot of us don't want to go to church, doesn't want to go to fight. And they say, I know Jesus didn't teach us to fight. He said we got to love everybody. But God said, Jehaziel told Jehoshaphat, and this is what some of y'all use for an excuse. 
Jehaziel told Jehoshaphat, the Lord said the battle is not yours, but mine. And y'all use that. But y'all forget the second half of that sentence. He said, but I want you to go to the, the, the valley of Ziz and meet the enemy and fight before and I will give you the battle. So that's what we believe in. God bless you.